Hey guys, Basil here from TechnoTalk with uh, tutorial number four in Java. Um, sorry, it's been kind of a gap uh, since tutorial number three, but this week has been kind of hectic in school. So uh, if you haven't already watched uh, tutorial number three, you can click previous tutorial up here and uh, go watch it because this is going to be kind of continuing on to that. In tutorial three, we learned about if statements, and this is actually the same program that we used in that tutorial. Um, remember, we created our class if statements, and then in the main method, we had um, three integers, x, y, and z. We set them values, and then we made uh, some conditions, some if statements. We had a nested if inside of um, this if statement, and then we had an else for this if. And, uh, yeah. And technically, we could also, if we wanted, we could make an else for this if, so that it could this could still be true, but it could still say something else. If this didn't happen, then et cetera, et cetera. We could go on. Um, so... The the thing about this program is that it'll run, but the only reason the only uh, way it'll ever be different is if you actually go into the code and change the values for these integers. Well, whenever you're running a program, whenever you're um, doing something on a computer, you don't go into the code to change values, do you? I mean, the it, you, the program should be able to ask the user for something, and it sh the user should be able to tell it uh, without having to go into the code what these values are. So we're t in this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to use scanners. And really, there's two ways that you can do input in Java, or at least two ways that I know, scanners and buffers. I'm not very good with buffers, and uh, really, I don't think they're as good as scanners, so we're going to stick with scanner. I think it's simpler. Uh, so what we're going to start with is something that I don't think we've gone over is that here outside of my class, um, this is completely separate from any classes or methods, uh, you could, there's certain things that are built into Java that you can import um, in order to use. So here I could just say import java.util.asterisk and then end it with a semicolon. And you probably don't understand what this means right now. Really, there's a lot of things you can import. I could you, there's a lot of things built into Java that you can import and use in your in your code. Um, for now, just remember that like imports what you use whenever you're importing something. Kind of simple. And you're just gonna have Java dot util dot asterisk. The asterisk is basically um take bringing everything from this uh, folder, which is really what you need. You could also put like dot scanner, but um let's just stick with asterisk for now. It just makes it easier. You can be safe. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to define your scanner, and um, you would do that just like you define a variable. Uh, you would say like scanner. So scanner is now kind of acts like a data type. So you call it scan. I like to call it scan. It's the easiest to um, think. And to set it equal to new scanner, and then it has to be a scanner of something. I mean, think about the term scanner. What is it going to be scanning? What is it going to be reading? It's going to be reading the input of the user. So it's going to be system dot in and then enter the semicolon. Because remember when we do output, like down here we have system.out, well input is system.in, but the difference is that you're not printing something so you have to create a scanner. So basically, um, this is just defining my scanner. So now I want to ask the user for these values right here. So we're going to mess with the code a little bit because we don't want these to already be set. So um, the way we would do this, just erase these real quick, say we had integer x. We want x to be able to be inputted by the user. So you just set it equal to, and instead of putting a number there, an integer, for example, to set it equal to, you would just say scan, because remember that's the name of the scanner, dot next, and then because the data type is an int, you would have to put next int with a capital I, and then open and close um, your parentheses and put a semicolon. This statement right here is going to ask the user for something. So uh, first, you'd probably want to have to say system dot out dot print line and you'd want it to say um enter a value for x so this is just gonna say enter a value for x and then it'll ask the user it'll just leave a blank and the user will be able to input a number and what it should do is it should scan whatever um, the user inputs and set that set in integer x to that number so then you can say if x is less than y it'll do this and then um let's just use some shortcuts because we're that cool um, you could just copy this whole thing really and just paste it twice and say enter value for y enter value for z and just make this integer y and integer z and uh, of course we're working with integers here just to keep it simple you wouldn't be able to use decimals with this program if you wanted to you would put double like for example if we wanted x to be a double we would say double x I'm gonna fail double x right so if you do that when you're doing the scan just think this has to match up with this so it would be next not int but it would be next double and uh, strings are a little bit different but we'll get to that later 
So let's keep it as int and keep this as int. Okay, so now what we're what we've basically done is we've asked the user for a value of x, for a value of y. Oh, and just because I'm paranoid, um, let's go ahead and put some spaces backslash n inside of your parentheses when you're printing. That'll just tell the computer to skip a line so that it's not all jumbled together. So it's you're going to input the values and it's going to store them and then if x is less than y, so if whatever the user put in for x, and again we want some backspaces here, um, actually it's probably easier to just put it at the end of this one, because you can put it at the end or the beginning, so yeah. So if whatever the user put in for x is less than whatever the user put in for y, then it'll do this. So all these conditions will apply depending on what the user puts in. So if we run, if we run this, you'll see here it's saying enter a value for x, okay, let's do 12. Enter a value for y, uh, 2. So what we're saying is that x is not less than y, right? And then we're going to enter a value for z. And uh, since we don't have any other else's, it doesn't really matter what we put for 34. It's going to say x is not less than y because 12 is not less than 2. And it, we just put that. So let's run this again. And this time, let's put um, 2 and 12. So x is less than y. And then in that, we're going to want to put for z, we want y to be greater than x, y to be greater than z, right, for it to say y is greater than z. So um, it's going to say x is less than y anyway because it's doing this, but then we can also see if we want to say y is greater than z. So just set z to like uh, 6, and it should say x is less than y and y is greater than z. So as you can see, you can just kind of mess around with this. It really um, is easier to learn once you put it into practice, but that's a really essential part of programming. I think I've been taking up a little bit of time, so I'm going to go now. So see you guys.